All right, I believe we are live. Sorry, guys, I'm a little late trying to get caught up on everything. Uh, a lot of data to crunch today and put in and enter, so I apologize for the little delay here. I thought I had a little bit more time. But I got everything straightened out, planned the way I wanted to go. So today was a wild day. Bitcoin obviously was down. Uh, we're 17 days away from the having event right now, which is uh, right around there, somewhere around there, so we're getting close. Obviously, the miners did pretty bad today, uh, except for two, I think maybe three, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure too. Uh, Bitfarms and Iron. Iron had a nice day today. We got news on them. So here's what we got. We got uh, production updates for Bitfarms, Cypher, Clean Spark. We have news from Iron getting fully funded to 20x hash. And then we have also Clean Spark providing us that they're fully funded to 50x hash with miners, right? Nothing about infrastructure yet, but we do have that. We'll look at, we'll look at those stories. We'll also take a look at Moss and providing us with F, uh, fiscal year 2023 numbers. And we'll look at the quarter numbers there. We'll see how that looks from Austin there. Okay, and then afterwards, we'll get into the Q&A. So I'm going to try to get through this relatively quickly. If I'm going too fast for you guys, you can always slow down the speed of the video. Well, maybe not the live video, but the replay. You can slow down the video at like 75% or 50% on YouTube. That should help you guys out. And as always, okay, kind of stressed out a little bit here. But as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research. I'm investing in flying coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoyed this type of content, hit like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. Corrections will be posted to Discord, YouTube, and Twitter. And let's get into what's going on here with the markets right now. And I have the wrong thing up. Oh, figures. Okay. Let's get into the markets. So here's what happened on the markets today. Uh, Bitcoin obviously fell today. I mean, we had a nice day yesterday. We were up approximately 2.39%. We basically gave it all back today. And we went down even more. We went down to a low of 68,055. We finished out the day at 69,683. We're down a little bit now on the day as it is right now. And like I said, we're getting close to the having event. Um, so we're getting closer to that. And then obviously the miners didn't do too, too good today. Uh, you can see here that only, yeah, really only three miners are really good or any good. Uh, Bitfarms was up 1.57%, right? DMG was up 0.13% and Iron was up 19.81%. Obviously that's based on the news that came out today. For them so that was obviously good there uh which is something that we've been waiting for and there's also more good news from iron um we'll get into it once we cover iron but obviously a fantastic day this is kind of what we've been waiting for is them to provide us that they're fully funded to 20x hash anytime that happens that a company provides us with information they're fully funded to x whatever it might be the stock usually takes off because at that point investors know that dilution for the most part is pretty much done for at the moment at least right for the time being okay so that's always good news there all right so let's get into the stories that we do have here we'll try to get through this as fast as i can not to waste your guys' time. And the reason I'm doing a live stream today is just, it took me a while to get all the data on everybody here. And that obviously pushed me out to way late in the evening. And by the time I record something, transcode it, upload it to YouTube and everything else, it just takes a lot of time. So I figured we'll kill a couple birds with one stone and do this live here. So I hope you guys appreciate it. And we'll obviously get into a Q&A because then I have a little bit more time for that. All right, but here's what we got. Iron, obviously, Came up with a great headline, 20 exa hash expansion fully funded. Perfect, right? This is exactly what we wanted to see from them or any miner that's actually diluting right now using the ATM that they are fully funded to whatever it might be. So Iron provided this today, which was fantastic. So here's what we have. 2024 expansion now fully funded. So 301 million cash, no debt. 460 megawatt of data centers and 20 exa hash of Bitcoin mining in 2024. Fantastic news, right? They're getting to that without a problem. Expansion fully funded following completion of a targeted ATM equity raising program. So this is excellent news. Anytime we've seen an ATM come up, I mean, Bitfarms right now is dealing with it right now. CleanSpark is dealing with it as well. Uh, the stock kind of lags for a time being until that's fully funded or at least when they provide the information that's fully funded and then the stock takes off because they know we're at the end of it. Uh, but also really good news here. I've been harping on, on uh, Iron, or Iris Energy at the time, but Iron to commence quarterly reporting immediately, right? Starting from the quarter ending March 31st, 2024, they are going to be providing us with quarterly results. This is a big win uh, because now we can actually track them like we do with the other miners and we can actually see them, uh, you know, the performance on the balance sheet like quarterly, like we're supposed to see instead of having to wait six months for it. So this is huge news. This is going to obviously help also get investor interest, um, possibly uh, some other funds, money, big money getting into it, potentially some more, because now they have this uh, avenue to see what's going on with them, right? And that's one of the things I've always been griping about, Iron, is one, not providing quarterly results, and the other one was always that they don't have a huddle position, but maybe in due course, maybe they will have a little bit of huddle position. Uh, maybe, we'll see, right? But at least that's one thing that I was harping on, the quarterly results is now 
going to be taken care of. So that's fantastic news there. So I hope you guys are doing well with Iron. Okay, let's get into Moss in here really quick. And we'll run through this one relatively quickly. So Moss Infrastructure Group Inc. reports Q4 and fiscal year 2023 financial results. This was obviously some, some of you guys have been waiting for it. Obviously, Moss in is, I think, right now heavily manipulated because they don't have a lot of shares out. And we'll take a look at all the information here. But you guys can read all this. I'm not going to go through it all. Uh, we're going to really look at their financial results here on my spreadsheet. So we go to Moss in here. This is based on obviously today's stock price, which is $1.39. They have about 16.6 .6 million shares outstanding. This is why the stock has been manipulated in the past. It's just easy to manipulate when you have such a low share count. Market cap, 23.1 million right now. You can see their performance here over the last 12 weeks has not been great, right? Uh, earlier this year, or even, yeah, earlier this year, late last year, Boston was like one of the top performing stocks. It was up like, uh, I think at one point, 400, 500 percent, something like that, if I remember correctly, if not even higher than that from the 52 week lows. Right. And there was absolutely no reason for it to be uh, doing this well. And that's why I think it was being manipulated uh, quite heavily. All right. Current hash rate about one point five exa hash, future hash rate about one point eight. Uh, we don't even know if they're going to get to one point eight based on the number miners that they have for self mining. They also do hosting and then energy uh, sales as well. But here's what we got on them on the quarterly numbers. So last four quarters revenue self mining only. Right, we're not including the hosting or the energy side of things, uh, but that has been increasing here more, a little bit less so in the last uh, two quarters. So 6.9 million in Q3 and then 7.04 million in Q4. Very small increase on that, even though we've had more uh, Bitcoin transaction fees adding into it. I think their miners are just older. We'll take a look at those miners here in a second. The current quarter, I'm estimating maybe 7.46 million if things work out that way, and then the last four quarters operating costs minus depreciation. So we're not including depreciation in there. It has been obviously rising as well, and it's not too bad. It's 5.58 of 7.46 million. So they do have some uh, revenue there, about 1.9 million or something like that, and gross profit potentially for self-mining. Uh, it's still definitely on the lower end side because when you look at their other costs, it's, uh, it doesn't really make much sense there. Uh, but custom mine one Bitcoin mine's depreciation went up to 28.8 thousand in Q4. That's a huge increase there. Bitcoin mine quarterly peaked in Q3, 246, came back down to 193 in Q4, even though we obviously saw a lot more transaction fees and things like that being added to it, but that didn't really help them out. Debt to equity, obviously we want lower is better on here. It's gone up to 1.86, not a good sign. Current ratio, higher is better. Uh, that's actually gone up a little bit here, so a little bit of an improvement there. But total current assets is at 20 million, total current liabilities 53.32 million. Not a good sign, right? Uh, going down here, uh, let me see the miners. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about the miners. You can see that they have some of the older generation miners here, the 90 terahash and the 85 terahash miners, and they haven't done anything to uh, change those out or update them or anything like that. Uh, so they're going to be in a little bit of a hard shape uh, or a hard spot come after the having event. Uh, it depends on where Bitcoin goes. If Bitcoin goes up much faster than the network hash rate, then they might be still profitable on those, but it's going to be definitely a lot more challenging for them. And we'll look at the numbers down here. We'll get into some of these metrics here in a little bit. Uh, so assets here, we can see here at the end of Q4 was 20 million, like we said. Total assets was 84 million. And then total liabilities here was actually 53 million. So that's actually up from the 46 million that we had over here. Uh, assets also went down from 87 million to 84 million total. Uh, but the total current assets actually went up to 20 million from 13.6 million there. Okay, uh, let's see. Total liabilities went up to 54 million from 47 million. And then total liabilities and stockholder equity actually went down to 84 million from 87 million, right? Not a good sign when that's going down. Revenues. Uh, so we kind of covered that a little bit for self mining. Their all in revenue was 14 million here. So that's an increase from the 11.3 million that they had here. Obviously, a slight increase from Q3, where they had 6.9 million to 7 million right here. And then hosting did increase about doubled, uh, almost doubled, 4.4 million compared to 2.9 million. So that's good there. They had sale of cryptocurrency mining equipment, so they sold some miners, it looks like, for 68000 potentially. And then net energy benefits was $2.4 million. So, I mean, they're getting quite a bit here for energy benefits on this side of things. Okay, uh, let's see. Revenue not included in sale of equipment was 11.528. Cost of sales was $19.7 million. So, uh, let's see, where is that coming from? Oh, we're looking at a bunch of numbers here on that. We're including those things. Okay. 
Uh, going down here, gross profit was 4.8 million. And then expenses, general administrative was 4.27. So I mean, basically, whatever your gross profit is, your general administrative basically took out all of it right there. And then you got share-based compensation. That's non-cash. Depreciation amortization is non-cash. And that's why you end up with a negative 14.7 million here for loss from operations. And then from other non-operating income here, we can see that they are down. Uh, they lost 6.539 million. Total net loss was 10 million here compared to a 19. So that's a little bit better there. I would definitely like to see their general administrative compensation come down. It was the fourth quarter, so they got obviously bonuses in there added as well, because they were at 3.7 million here, or where's the general administrative? There is 4.7. So that's gone up from 3.6. Uh, like I said, that's basically my thing is because it was in the fourth quarter, they probably put, added in some bonuses in there. But you can see that that has been kind of up and down here. Uh, 4.9 in Q1, 6.2 in Q2. Q3 was 3.6, which would have been much nicer. If they could have gone down even more, that would have been even better on it. Okay. And then loss per share for the year was $3.86 per loss. Okay. Going down over here, we can see that the general administrative compensation compared to revenue, 68.31%. Um, that is going to be tough on them, right? They can't get that under control or increase revenues tremendously. Here in the next couple quarters, months, they're going to be in some trouble there, I think, because they're just eating too much of their revenue uh, with general administrative compensation on it. Uh, going over here, we have debt to equity recovered that, current ratio recovered that, book to value is 0.76, uh, or sorry, book to value was 30.3 million, price to book ratio was 0.76, enterprise value 35, negative 35.7 million, and EBITDA was negative 3.3 million on it right now. And then their cost, like I said, was 28.8 thousand per Bitcoin right now. And that's because they have older machines, right? So this is one that I would probably stay away from unless they can somehow turn the ship around dramatically here in the next quarter or two, potentially. Uh, you know, hosting does help a little bit here. I have to run the numbers on hosting on them to see how profitable that is actually. Self-mining hosting was 4.8. I mean, what was the, if we had the actual cost for uh, operations divided into these different business segments. They'll kind of help us uh, see where things are at. We can kind of maybe figure out based on percentage wise of revenue to total revenue on these things, but we'll see. Okay. So that's it for that one. You guys let me know what you guys think of it. And if you have any questions about it, but I mean, you can see here that the hash rate has been stagnant. Uh, BTC per hash efficiency has been coming down. Now we're hash rate has been going up. So that's the reason for it. What else? If your BTC also has been coming down as well. Um, so not a good sign there. Okay, but let me know what you guys think. All right, let's get into the next story here, which is going to be on BitFarms. So BitFarms announced March 2024 production operations update. They, let's see, I have it down here. You guys can read this. They reaffirmed that they are basically buying all the machines that they need to get to 21 exahash. Obviously, what we're waiting now from them is to provide us an update that they're fully funded to reach that. Um, so you guys can read this here. I'm trying to save you guys a little bit of time here. Big thing is total BTC mined was 286. That's down obviously from February. Month and operating hash rate 6.5, which is the same. They did state, uh, I think it's down below, that they're going to get to 7 extra hash. Average operating hash rate 5.7. They did state in here that they had some maintenance and some curtailment. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, with curtailment in Quebec and Paraguay, as well as power plant maintenance in Argentina, we had fewer miners online than normal, resulting in a month end hash rate of 6.5. We expect to achieve 7 extra hash by mid April. Okay, so there it is. Uh, they did get some new miners of the T21s, 1,650 as well, and uh, with 6,400 additional miners in transit. So those are coming in. So those are, that's good. So at least they're going to be growing there, and obviously they have a lot more coming in. Uh, let's see if there's anything else in here. There it is. BTC held in Treasury, increased to 806, so just a little bit here. They sold most of their Bitcoin here. They sold 284 of the 286 BTC earned, and I'm guessing that's just to fund operations. Maybe they're going to be diluting a little bit less than we thought, potentially. Uh, but we'll see once that story comes out. So let's go to BitFarms here really quick. So BitFarms has 322 million shares outstanding, stock price 227, market cap 731 million. They're basically like in the same market cap right now as Iron Energy is. If you look at Iron, we talked about them just a second ago. Yeah, 711 million. So they're pretty close to each other right now, uh, and they're pretty close to hash rate too. I think Iron is at 7x a hash, and BitFarms is at 6.5. So those are pretty, pretty close to each other right now. Uh, Performance-wise, I mean, you can see it's been like luster here the last 12 weeks, eight weeks, four weeks, one week, uh, all in red here right now, which we've seen with a lot of miners as well. 
And then current hash rate 6.5x to hash, future hash rate 21x to hash, 14 hash rate left to install. Obviously, a lot of growth here in the next potential nine months, which will be good if they can obviously um, execute on that. And then BTC mined here, 286, that has been coming down. Uh, month over month difference, they are down about 14 from the prior month on that one. Revenue has been increasing here, 19.36 million. That's their best month here as far as revenue is concerned. Obviously, Bitcoin price has been going up, which is good. BTC huddle position has been going up throughout the year as well, but it's kind of stagnated here a little bit in the last couple, what, four or five months or so, right? We'd like to see that maybe go up a little bit more, uh, but if they're trying to fund operations more so and growth through selling Bitcoin, and instead of pulling on the trigger too much on uh, on the stock price, right? Because if you pull too much on the dilution side of things, the stock price might go down. So they're trying to keep it probably about a, above a dollar as much as they can. So I think that's kind of what they're doing there. Hash rate you can see here has been kind of stuck at 6.5x to hash for about four months. Uh, no, no difference there. BTC sold. They're actually selling less each month here, which is kind of nice to see. And then BTC per X hash efficiency has been coming down, which has been coming down for a lot of the miners because the network hash rate has continued to increase. Okay, uh, BTC sold, how much they sold? 19.23 million. And then going down here, we'll get into this part up later. Institutions, institutions did increase 164, which is good. We want to see institutions buying into these companies. Shares also went up to 76.6 million from 75.8, so that's good. Percentage owned by institutions is now 22.9 instead of 22.7%. We still have the same uh, buy ratings, one strong buy, three buy ratings, zero holds, zero underperforms, zero sells. We have the $7 high, uh, Analyst estimates for them, targets, price targets, seven dollars for the high, four seventy-five. That's actually an increase, and the low actually increased to four dollars from them. Now, as far as what we have them mining here, uh, for the month it looks like they were mining for approximately in March about twenty-seven point two seven eight days, right, on all these machines here, which got us to the nineteen point three six two million, and I added about four point three eight percent in BTC transaction fees, eight hundred forty-eight thousand there, right. So I'm keeping track of those as well. So I looked through all the uh, month of March for all of these guys, uh, not these guys, but Bitcoin transaction fees, what they actually amounted to each month. And I do a, basically what was the percentage out of what the possible Bitcoin being produced during the month was. Um, so that way we can kind of track it that way and we can provide better numbers on their operational uptime as well. Okay, so that's all good. And like I said, they still have a lot of growth here. There's still a lot of machines that need to be plugged in, infrastructure that needs to be built out. Um, so hopefully they can get that all done. Uh, going up here. Currently, I have them between $5.15. That's using the current quarter that we're in. That's estimated. The last three quarters, which are final, those are all good. We're looking at about $165 million, almost $166 million in revenue for the last four quarters, which is nice. And they're uh, looking at 50% net income, 75% net income, $5.15 to $7.73, which is pretty close to what the analysts have down here. And then if we're looking forward in the next 12 months, and this is pretty static. This is basically what the revenue was for this month, multiplied times 12 months, because we were basically in the month where we're going to have the having event anyways, um, within the next, what, 17 days or something like that, 20 days. Uh, so that's going to get cut in half at that point. And I'm looking at $3.61 to $5.41 potentially. But if Bitcoin goes up much higher, obviously that's all going to raise up, right? Uh, so overall, pretty good, right? Uh, Huddle increases a little bit. Hash rate, we'd like to see more hash rate increase as well. But they did install some miners. I think they maybe swapped out some older miners as well uh, for more efficient ones, which is fine. And then we just need to see growth going forward because they got nine months left to get to 21 exahash. And that's a lot of growth to get done in that amount of time. Um, but that's it. Okay. That's it for BitFarms. Let's take a look at the next one here, which is going to be on Cypher. So Cypher Mining announces March 2024 operational update. And here's what we have. BTC mine, 316. BTC held, 1,741. That actually increased. And then month end operating hash rate, 7.6, which I believe is the same as the, that they had last month. Uh, there's not much really in here. You can see the bear expansion happening here, which is nice to see. Bitcoin production updates. Um, there are, You can read all that by yourself. I'm going to waste your guys' time on that. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with Iron, and I do apologize. I should have probably showed this. I was going to show this to you guys. Is look at the build out here. 20 megawatt operating data center, and this is in Childress. And then look at it now, man. They have definitely done a lot of work here. Um, so great job by Iron on that one. So this was from August of last year. And then look, this is basically March, nine months out, roughly. Huge build out here, which is nice to see. All right, going back to Cypher here. Cypher, we covered the numbers. Let's take a look at the numbers that I have for Cypher. Here we go. Okay. Cypher has 296 million shares outstanding. Uh, stock price right now is at $4.88. Market cap, $1.4 billion. 
uh, you can see that their performance of the last 12 weeks has been pretty good, right? They're up 31% from 12 weeks ago, 92% up from eight weeks ago. From four weeks ago, they're up 66%. And from basically a week ago, they're up 11%. Mainly because I think the reason that they've done so much better is, is that fear with Bitfury holding so many shares of their company, around 70 some percent, that's been reduced down to about 40 some percent. That has taken the, I think, the weight off the stock itself. And investors are more likely now to not be as fearful of Bitfury potentially selling, you know, tranches of 10 million, 20 million of shares at a time and, you know, dumping the stock. Um, so I think that's kind of gone away. So investors are a little bit more appeased by this. They definitely like this a little bit more. And I think that's why the stock is doing really well. Plus, they've been operating really well. They've been growing the hodl as well, which we'll get into here right now. But you can see that their self-mining BTC has been going down like we've seen with others that aren't growing their hash rate. Revenue is also the best here that they've seen, 18.8 million. So they're a little bit under from where BitFarms was, right? 19 something million. And then you got total hash rate with JV, 7.6. They have a joint venture that they are a part of as well. We'll take a look at those numbers down below. I'll have to explain some stuff for you guys there. BTC Hot, like I said, has been increasing here quite nicely. So that's good to see there, especially as we get into the having event. BTC sold, they've been selling less and less, kind of like CleanSpark, right? They've been doing the same thing. They, as they get closer to the to the having, they've been uh, huddling a heck of a lot more on it. Going down here, BTC per access efficiency, you can see that's been coming down as well. BTC sold value, less and less. And then um, we cover these numbers here, metrics and the quarterly results. Going down here, as far as institutions side of things, institutions have increased to 169 from 167. Shares increased from 43 million or 43.4 million from 43, so that's good. And then uh, as far as institutions and analyst ratings, percentage-wise, that's 14.93, so that's actually down. So we've seen some dilution there, it looks like, recently to bring that down um, based on this. Uh, buy ratings here, we got two strong buy ratings, four buy ratings, uh, one hold rating, zero underperformance, zero sells. Price targets actually went down here to $6 from $8. Average went down to 5 from 5.67. And the low went down to four from 450. And I think that might be because of the dilution here uh, in shares, right? Uh, total current assets, huge jump here. Obviously that's from the dilution uh, that's helped them out there. Total current liabilities have come down. So that's good there. And then looking at the data here. So if you guys remember from when they reported their Q4 or fiscal year 2023 numbers, I was off on the fourth quarter numbers off by like 11% or something like that to the upside. I couldn't figure out why. I figured out why today. And that's because I was only including, the way I was calculating is was for the self-mining was the Bitcoin that they provided here at the end of the month or each month, right? So like 465 here. And when I actually take into account their joint venture, their self-mining was actually like 417. So I added a new column in here today for self-mining. So that's why I'm saying I had to do a lot of data for you guys to figure all this stuff out. Uh, but we figured it out, and uh, based on this, I would have been only off by 1.22% on it. So I figured it out. I figured what the problem was. Uh, January was 326 compared to the 371 that they reported. February was 290 compared to the 334 that they reported. In March, they reported 316. I have about, it's estimated, right, calculated 277.9, so about 278 Bitcoin. Uh, so based on this, we're looking at about $47 million in revenue total for the quarter right now. Okay. Going down here, here is their joint venture stuff. So I didn't add any uh, miners for them until possibly the next quarter. We're going to be adding some miners here, the A1 for, or A1466 miners here. They're getting about 2.5 exahash of that installed. And I think they have 25% of the joint J JV there, I believe. It might be terrible if that has the JV. Uh, but I know it's less than 50%, I believe. So they can report it as actual revenue side of things. Okay, going down over here for March we installed some miners down here to get them to the 7.6 uh, exahash, which is right here. Before they were at 7.4, that's total, that's a combination of the joint venture and the uh, self-mining side of business. And then I added about 937,000 for the Bitcoin transaction fees uh, into the month as well. And that got us to the total 21.393 million, which coincides with what they reported here, 21.393, right, for 316 Bitcoin. So I've got it all resolved here. That's kind of the way things are going to be going forward. We're going to be tracking their self-mining more so than we are the total Bitcoin, which I wish they would, you know, segregate this stuff out. This is what we made for self-mining. This is what we get from the JV. It makes it a heck of a lot easier instead of us trying to figure it out. And then when they increase their hash rate here for the JV, I hope they mention that, that it's going to bear, uh, what do they have here? Bear, uh, Alvarez, Bear, and Chief, right? If it's going to one of those 
facilities. I hope they mention that it's going there, that I can put it up here and keep it separated out. Uh, but we'll see if they do that. Otherwise, I would just say, please separate this out. Uh, it makes it so much easier for investors because at the end of the day, when they report, like I saw, like I said here, right? I was off by 11% in revenue because if you look at the revenue here based on what they reported was 48 million and they reported only 43 million right uh, so i was off by 11 percent, something like that on it and uh, now i'm only off by 1.22 percent which is much closer to where they where they should be uh, so that works out much better so i think this current quarter will be much better all right but going back up here currently i have them between five dollars and fourteen cents to seven dollars and seventy cents um, they're at four dollars and eighty eight cents i think that they are still currently undervalued right and Based on what the analysts are looking at, six dollars to four dollars. I mean, that's kind of where we are right now, pretty close to that, as it is. Uh, so that is it for them. All things being equal, they've been doing a pretty good job here. They need to grow. They do have options to grow more. We currently have them at a future hash rate of about sixteen point eight. That's with the JVs as well, I believe, in there as well. Yeah. Um, so that's sixteen point eight with the JVs. Take out the JVs. You're looking at approximately how much are the JVs here? JVs are about 4.4, uh, so that gets them about to 12, 12 extra hash for self-mining, right? They do have the option, I believe, to buy more machines uh, this year if they can build out their infrastructure faster. Otherwise, we're looking at possibly 2025 to grow even more beyond that, okay? That's kind of what we have right now, at least. So, yeah, I mean, you're even seeing here, NMIRT 21's delivery, H1 2025, that's kind of when they're scheduled right now. So that would be into 2025. But if they pull down the option they could possibly get there faster and more and more hash rate growth pot potentially okay so that's it for that one let's take a look at clean spark here really quick so clean spark releases march 2024 bitcoin mining update and we had some good update here about them being fully funded to 50x hash but here's what's going on here uh let's see march results were the payoff for our hard work and tremendous growth over the last few months as it was first full month with the Sandersville expansion in our newly acquired site in Mississippi Online, bringing our entire operating hash rate to over 16 exahash. With 17 exahash imminent, the result was a record amount of Bitcoin mined in the last full month before having, which it was, which was a great um, extra month for them. So with the capital on hand, we have now fully funded the remaining payments of the all 160,000 S21s that we announced in January. We are prepared to thrive post having. We are now looking beyond having and expect to be highly active over the next, over the coming months, given that we have the balance sheet and capital tools to make us one of the most aggressive acquirers in the industry. So there you go. They're saying basically they're going to be out there buying infrastructure like all, like it's on sale. And hopefully it is on sale for them or for anybody that's buying inf infrastructure right now. Uh, right. This is kind of what we want to see because they s have a huge growth plan. They want to get to 32 acts to hash by the end of the year, which is basically double from where they are right now and potentially to 50x a hash in next year sometime, right? So they do need a lot of infrastructure to grow there. Um, let me see here. Going down here, opportunities are prevalent, and we believe the consolidation prospects, which have been discussed abundantly throughout the industry for some time, are more relevant than ever before. Being prepared to act on the opportunities that meet the CleanSpark standard will be our focus for the balance of the year. We now have all the tools in place to be best positioned for action. We look forward to sharing more in the coming weeks and months as we continue our extraordinary journey to 50x hash while maintaining one of the most energy efficient Bitcoin mining fleets in the world. Right. So, I mean, this definitely puts them in the top three of Bitcoin miners. Right. Uh, Marathon wants to get to like 50x hash. Um, Riot has plans to get to like 100x hash. Right. But that's all uh, in due course, in due time. So. It's going to be interesting to see who can get to where fast, uh, faster potentially. Um, and it'll be fun to see. Uh, I think it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be <laughs> exciting time. We'll see how they do it, if we have a bear market or not, how, how well they build out and others as well. So I'll be tracking all that stuff because I definitely enjoy this. Uh, but here's what we have for the update. Bitcoin mined in March 806. Uh, total Bitcoin holdings as of March 31st, 5,021. And I think I did a video a while back. Oh, probably, gosh, when was this? Six, nine months ago, maybe? I'll just look back. But I think I said in that video that they might be able to get to like five exahash or something like that by the time having having happens, if they can get to the 16 exahash by the end of December or something like that. So this is actually really good to see that they were able to do that. But I'll have to go back there. If it was 5,000, I can't remember if it was like 7,000 uh, BTC. can't remember. But nonetheless, that's really good accomplishment by them. But the other side of this is that they are basically uh, using the dilution to fund operations and overhead, right? So they've been hodling a lot, which means they have to pay for the electricity, 
employees, the wages, all that stuff out of basically cash, which comes out of dilution. But if Bitcoin goes up potentially to 2x, 3x from here, that is going to make it a little bit more worth the while, I guess. Okay, current hash rate 16.4. So they did install some here. And then Dalton Energization, construction of the company's recent Dalton acquisition is now nearing completion. 50 megawatts of power are scheduled to be turned on early this week. We expect to promptly begin racking miners upon energization. Once miners are racked, the site will bring CleanSparks operating hash rate to over 17x hash. It is expected to be fully operational on, on or before April 12th. The site marks the first step of adding 3x hash in the coming quarter to reach 20x hash. So we got three months to reach 20x hash, one, basically 1x one hash if they get to 17 a month roughly. Um, I think they can pull that off. Okay, so here's what we have for CleanSpark. Uh, going up here. CleanSpark currently has 225 million shares outstanding as of the latest ATM that they announced. Uh, stock price is at $18.58. That gives them a $4.18 billion market cap. You can see that the stock has done pretty well here over the last 12 weeks. Actually, really well. Uh, it's up 107% from 12 weeks ago, up uh, 156% up eight weeks ago. From four weeks ago, it's up 18.8. From last week, it was up 8.66. Obviously, this week might be a little down week. We'll see what happens there. With uh, Maybe we've kind of bottomed out where it's going to bottom out uh, with the announcement of the ATM. Current hash rate 16.4, future hash rate uh, 5, 52x hash. I'm guessing some of that hash rate is going to be replacing some older maybe miners, uh, but they do have obviously the path to get to 50x hash. Based on what they reported here and the miners that I have for them, I have them getting to about 52x hash. Uh, and then looking down here, right, uh, March here. Best month here that they've had so far. HODL, oh, HODL, I almost forgot HODL. HODL is 5,021. That's valued about 340 million right now with the Bitcoin price where it's at. And then BTC mine 806. So that's the most that they've mined here in the last year. Uh, increased by 158 Bitcoin. Revenue here, monthly revenue, 54.57 million. That is fantastic there to see. Obviously, a huge increase from the 32.3 million that they had in February. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and then uh, BTC HODL. You can see that they started basically accumulating from last year in March. Uh, right? They were saying that they, as we get closer to the halving event, they're going to start accumulating more and more. And that is the case. I mean, they were at 196. So basically, you could say that they increased their huddle by 5,000 um, roughly in just a year, which is fantastic to see. And then, well, hopefully, they'll use it properly when we get into the bull run and possibly bear market. I don't want them sitting on that 5,000 for the full cycle where we go back down to potentially like 40,000 in Bitcoin or something like that. Um, I want them to definitely use it to grow in the uh, bear market potentially. Hash rate 16.4, right? There were 16.6, so really huge growth here in the last two months. BTC sold, right? They only sold like three Bitcoin here, three before, six before. So they've been kind of uh, selling less and less, uh, it seems like. And then BTC per access efficiency, that has gone up to 49.1 here, down a little or up a little bit from February, which was down to 40.5, but they had a huge increase in hash rate that obviously always impacts it as well. Okay, going down here to institutions and analyst ratings. Um, institutions did increase a little bit here to 266. Shares increased a little bit also to 93.2 million. And then percentage went down to 41.87. Obviously, we saw that uh, dilution happen there with 500 million ATM. So that's the reason why the percentage went because then sh uh, shares went up. We still have two strong buy ratings, three buy ratings, one hold rating, zero underperformed, zero sell. Price targets went up a little bit here to $30 from 27 for the high. Average went up to 21 from 14 and the low went up from 8 to 10. All good things here. Uh, looking at their numbers here, I mean, they got a lot of miners now. Used to be a much shorter spreadsheet here, but it's gotten kind of much, much longer here. So for the month of March, we included these roughly 2,100 of these uh, 200 terrorist miners, got them an additional 420 petahash, and that got us to 16.4, and that also got us to the 54.566 million in revenue. Wow, so a huge number there for them uh, before the having event. Uh, so that's kind of what we are at. Let's see, going up here, as far as where I see them, right? I mean, obviously institutions are looking at much higher price targets for them, 30, which I would agree. I'm also being very conservative here. So I'm in between $12.57 and $18.85. And if we look forward in the next 12 months, right? Uh, basically after the halving event, based on the current revenue that they saw, we could be around 1452 to 2179, which they're kind of at 1858. I think they're kind of maybe slightly fairly valued right now to undervalued because if you believe Bitcoin's going to go up much higher here on a roll, for any of these miners, it's going to be the same thing, right? The PE is going to definitely increase as Bitcoin goes up in value. So as the PE goes up, 
um, let's say to 30, right? Now we're looking at $28 on the top here, 32 down here. You go up to sometimes we get a size 40 PE, right? You know, like a bull months, uh, bull run. Uh, but they could definitely get much more because their hash rate is going to be growing. So they're going to be generating more revenue as time goes on anyways. So, I mean, you're looking at 43 to 37 right now on the higher end side of things. So I think there's still plenty of room to run for them, for all the miners, especially if Bitcoin continues to go up. But that is it. I think we've covered everything here. I don't think there's anything else to cover. Uh, and we'll see what CleanSpark does. Like like with BitFarms, CleanSpark also has a lot of growth here, 16 exahash to grow in the next nine months. That's a lot. So um, they really need to start buying infrastructure and maybe green fields even to build out if they're even going to get close to or potentially getting that target of 32x uh by the end of this year right um so far they've been pretty good on their targets and they've usually either met them exceeded them or been short by a couple months but it hasn't been anywhere near a year that they've been delayed or anything like that so far so i'm willing to give them the benefit of doubt here but it's always trust and verify right so that's it um let's get into the q a side of things here really quick and we'll see if you guys have any questions and I, hopefully you guys followed along with all the stuff here. Uh, went really quick. I didn't want to waste your guys' time here. So let's get into the Q&A side of things. And we'll see where that takes us and how long that takes us. Uh, okay. So let me get a sip of water because my start, throat's starting to get dry. Uh, okay. So if you guys have any questions, hit me up. If there's a delay, about 15 seconds or so, 20 seconds between what I see and what you guys see. Uh, so let's see here. I don't think there's any questions. I'm trying to see if there's any questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, question. Okay. Um, at BitFarms and Iron, I'm thinking diversifying the portfolio. Is CleanSpark a good option if it is around 16? Yeah. I would think so. I mean, if you're, if we're still thinking that's going to go north of seventy dollars, potentially this bull run, sixteen dollars, I think it was going to be definitely good. But uh, you got some good ones here because I think that they're kind of undervalued right now. Bitforms and Iron, as it is, Iron had a nice pop today, but it's still probably has a lot more room to run. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I have no question. Hope you had a great week, Easter weekend. I did. Thank you so much. Hope you did too. Uh, let's see here. Iron price target end of year with latest news. Uh, it all depends where Bitcoin goes, but I'm guessing on the lower side, probably like around maybe $30, $40, somewhere around there, right? On the lower side of things. Uh, but we'll see where Bitcoin goes. That could obviously go much higher depending on how well they build out uh, and everything else. Uh, is this a good time to buy Cypher? I would dollar cost averaging. I wouldn't go all in, but I think right now, I think they're still under value from where they should be. Right, and maybe they can surprise us and build out even faster the facility that they need to, in order to buy the or to get the option on the miners that they have the option to get this year still, and that would be fantastic if they could do that. Uh, so, yeah, definitely not a financial advice. Obviously, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, let's see. Here. Uh, Bitfarms is forecasting 10x dash by the end of Q2, but have only forecasted uh, yeah next month. Do you think there is risk they won't hit it? I mean, there's always risk, right? There's always third-party risk, whether it's the electricity provider or something like that not getting connected or something like that. There's always a risk, uh, but we'll see. I mean, they're at 6.5. They get some 7, 3x a hash in two in three months. I, that's very doable, I think. Let's see. Sebastian, do you think Cypher will do an offering like CleanSpark and Iron just did? Uh, as far as an ATM, <clears throat> well, mm, good question. Let me look at the spreadsheet here that I have for Cypher. Let's see, what do they have as far as uh, revenue here? Or not revenue, but assets. Their assets were at $155 million. Uh, not right now. They might. Uh, they might pull on something because if they want to get to, what do they want to get to? They want to get to about... What is it, 12 exahash for self-mining potentially, and then they have an option to buy more to potentially get them to 20 exahash, I think. Right, they're going to have to do something, especially when we get into having events. They're going to have to get more cash out of it at that point. Uh, let's see. Do you hold actual BTC2? Yes, I do. I don't trade it. It's in my cold hardware wallet. I don't touch it. If I die, my kids will get it. My kids will be rich one day, potentially. 
Let's see. Thoughts on miners not hitting the cycle due to ETF, etc. Um, no, I don't think there's any concern with the ETFs taking like the juice out of the miners. The miners are still a proxy play on Bitcoin and a leverage play on Bitcoin. Um, they always will do better, I think, in the long run, especially we, we're getting close to having events. So that's always an impact. But after the having event, Bitcoin starts going up, we're going to do much, much better with uh, pricing on the miners because at that point, they're going to be more profitable or the profit uh, margins are going to be much better. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so I don't see that happening. Uh, since everyone is fully funded, how much outstanding from their recent ATM is left? Anticipating from for the drop again. Also, did anything come out about BitFarm CEO leaving? No, nothing came out. <coughs> CR, guys. <coughs> Getting a dry tickle in my throat. I don't think there's anything uh, new on the CEO leaving from BitFarms. And as far as the ATM, I, I think they're pretty much done with the ATM. I don't have to look into it. But I thought they only had the one ATM and they pretty much used it all up. Well, there might be still some left on it, but they pretty much used everything they needed to get to a 20x hash. For the time being, at least. Uh, let's see. Do you think Iron and Wolf should be valued close to what Bitfarm is currently? I mean, yeah, I mean, they have the same growth plans and everything else, so I think they should be kind of fairly valued. The only thing that might set them apart is HODL. Right, Iron doesn't have any any hodl. Bitfarm is a slider hodl. Wolf doesn't hodl anything either. So there might be a little benefit to Bitfarms potentially, but Bitfarms also being in Canada, Canadian uh, miner, and, and headquartered in Canada, in Canada, Canada, they can't use the FASB rules to reevaluate Bitcoin price uh, on the upside. Right, so that might be the only downside there. The other two don't hold anything, so that doesn't really matter there. And that's just basically uh, how fast can they build out and how well they operate, right? What is their uptime? What is their efficiencies? Things like that. So that's kind of where things might differ a little bit. Uh, let's see. How likely is it that Iron will acquire Blackwell chips? And if so, how many? Uh, who knows, right? Blackwell chips are the latest NVIDIA chips for um, AI. I don't know how many they're going to acquire. I think they've been acquiring the h 100 right now systems, right? Uh, I think the, H, uh, the Blackwells, I don't know when those are even shipping yet. Uh, but we don't know what they're going to do. They might buy some more, uh, and they'll let us know when they do that. Uh, I think Cores potentially is being grossly underestimated. Yeah, and that's because they just got a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. you got to give it time, right? Investors are a little spooked by it right now. To give it time. Let's see. Cypher, Riot, or Bitfarms, which has the most upside potential? Oh, wow. Uh, Riot has issues, right, with... The production at uh, Rockdale, if they can get their course kind of facility up and running and be, or at least have much better uptime, they're going to do potentially really well because they have a lot of growth there. So if you look at growth itself, Riot probably has the most growth out of these guys here. Uh, and we'll see how much they grow in 2024. Uh, but then you also take a look at where's Riot price right now and then where's, uh, where's Cypher and Bitfarm's price right now and could they possibly go up more? Potentially could be, right? It's not easy, some, not easy to tell. Can Riot make a new all-time high? Yeah, depending on Bitcoin, where Bitcoin goes, uh, how well they execute at Corsicana, how well, how fast they get that up and running, right, to a nice hash rate that we want to see, and then what's their uptime there and things like that, that will definitely have to play a big part. So it is possible. It just depends on them and where Bitcoin goes. Let's see. With BitFarm's synthetic huddle of Bitcoin, will they be able to buy and hold more Bitcoin after the halving? I would think so if they wanted to. I don't know if they want to buy it. I mean, you produce it at a much lower cost. Why would you buy it? Um, I think they learned a lesson last time they bought it uh, when Bitcoin was going down at, what, uh, 40000 I think it was, right? And they ended up selling it at like 20 some thousand. So I think they learned a lesson there on that one. So I don't think they're going to do that again. Uh, let's see it. Good afternoon. Hope you are well. I am well. Thank you. I hope you're well too. Iron or Bit Farms? Both. Uh, I like them both. So... That's the way I would go. Uh, Cypher Rider, BitFarms. BitFarms is the best of those. Uh, potent, uh, I mean, it's tough, right? It depends on how well they build out, how well they grow and everything else. Uh, before the having, do you think BTC hits 80,000 plus? So we're, what, 17, 20 days away roughly? It might be possible. We're not too far away from it. We're at 69,000. That's only 11,000 to go. It could happen. It all depends uh, right now. 
right? I mean, Bitcoin's doing things that we haven't seen before in other cycles, so it's definitely potential. Uh, what's your opinion on Satoshi BTC lawsuit and the frozen assets and how it could affect BTC price? I haven't been tracking it that much. There's probably other people that track it much more than I do. Um, so I don't know how that's going to impact things. Uh, what is the best miner to buy? Tough question. The things I like for is uh, efficiency, uptime, growth going forward, balance sheet, things like that. Look into those types of miners um, and then obviously see which one fits those things the best. Uh, but it's not easy, right? Depending on the price where they're at right now, had you bought like last year or something like that, you'd probably be doing a lot better on some of these miners, which didn't look like they're going to be doing great. So it's not easy. Uh, why have Bitfarms mined less this month than last month? Network hash rate has continued to go up. They also curtailed because they had, uh, was it the generation or the electricity provider was doing maintenance on, on it? It's in the press release, but that's the reasons why. But if you're not growing also that your hash rate and the network hash rate is going up, you're going to generate less. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Question, target price for CleanSpark by year's end. I still think my pri my target is $70, right? That's a very conservative target for them. And I think they're going to be able to get that and potentially surpass it even uh, by a lot. We'll see. Let's see. If CleanSpark is planning to on adding 3x to hash in the next three months, how do they get to 32x by the end of the year? Sounds like they might be behind schedule somewhat. That's one of the concerns, right? Is can they actually build out the 12x to hash that they need to in six months, right? I mean, they've done roughly 6x to hash in build outs in six months, I think. Uh, with uh, which facility was it? One of the facilities that they were able to build out and things like that. So they have done it before to six but this is double that right so you need to have more infrastructure more facilities and things like that to do that uh, it'll be interesting like i've said before right they have either met or surpassed their targets before we'll see if they can do that again if they were delayed they were delayed by a month or two so we'll give them that benefit of doubt right uh let's see question what about bit digital uh what about bit digital i mean right now i think investors are just kind of waiting on the ai stuff as far as how profitable it is uh right they want to see profit margins on it uh, because when i spoke with sam on a uh, twitter spaces about a week or two ago he said that in order for bitcoin to be as profitable as ai is right now bitcoin we need to be at about a hundred thousand so it's not too far off so they're obviously more profitable right now with the ai side of things but bitcoin gets to two hundred thousand past that Bitcoin's uh, more profitable at that point. But investors are just waiting on the results for Q1, I think. Does Bitfarms have an ATM? Yes, that is why the stock is kind of lagging right now. They've been pulling on that to get to 21 exahash, right? You need to build out buildings, infrastructure, uh, electrical, all that stuff has to be done. And that costs money. And they've been pulling on that. Th I think it's a 375 million. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think it's 375 million that they do have an ATM to, and they've been pulling on it. And I think that's why the stock is actually kind of... Uh, kind of stuck right now, right? We saw the same thing with Iron. Iron reported they're getting to 20x ash, fully funded, stock jumps. We may see the same thing with Bitfarms. Uh, let's see. Uh, how positive is the possibility of any, or any, so Sphere 3D stock surviving post having? I think they might be surviving, but I don't know. They're definitely going to be thriving. That's one thing. Uh, depends where Bitcoin price goes. Right now, it looks like, I think, based on my latest numbers, they need like Bitcoin to be like 100,000 to break even. They have, uh, all their mines are hosted. Their GNA, SGNA expenses are too high, right? So they would need to cut on a lot of expenses in order to survive. But they can do it potentially. Let's see, question, did Iron report they are reporting quarterly now? I'm seeing a lot of people talking about it today. Yes, right? This is something that I've been saying for a long time is I would like to see Iron report quarterly because it makes them more fairly evaluated, right, compared to their peers. Whereas we were waiting before six months, we can now get the data in three months to see how financially healthy they are or not uh, compared to other miners. So I think that's definitely a huge thing. That's huge. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Do you think we're going to pass through the boom and bust cycles again so BTC miners reach all all-time high and then crash another 80% and then repeat? Well, we don't know. This cycle is different. We've already seen it with uh, Bitcoin getting to a new all-time high before the having events. That never has happened before. And then with the ETFs, if we see the same thing that we saw with gold ETFs, we could be in for 
you know, a possible extended bull run here uh, for several years with Bitcoin. Uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. We just don't know right now. It's too early to tell. Uh, Koa, thank you. Love you, man. When do you expect BitFarms to announce they are fully funded to 21X Ash? Exciting times to come. That I don't know. I mean, that depends on them. They've been, you know, they've been selling a lot of the Bitcoin that they mine each month. Um, guessing to probably fund operations and fund growth. So it's hard to figure out where they might be at with their dilution, right? We know that they have a 375 million and they're trying to do it probably slowly so they don't uh, dump the stock too much in price. Uh, so it's tough to tell right now. Uh, Clean Spark, can you off, uh, clarify the offering 800 million or 1.3 billion total? Some are confused. I saw an X where some people posted 800 million on top of the original 500. Please clarify. Yeah, I mean, there was some confusion on it. The wording on it wasn't that great. Uh, I think Anthony came out also on Friday saying that he thought or he said, you know, it's 300 million additional. But no, if you go down like a page or two, you will find all the data in there. It is actually another 800 million on top of the 500 million. So that makes it a total of 1.3 billion in dilution. Right, that's kind of why the stock went down about 20% now, because it's about 20% dilution from where they were, right, on it. Let's see. Any news on Hive? Nothing yet. Um, I'm sure they're going to provide their operational update in the next week or so. They're like usually not the like one of the first ones to provide it, which would be nice if they did, but they don't. Um, big thing with Hive is they're looking to maintain their 1% of the Bitcoin network hash rate going forward. So Bitcoin network hash rate is at 600 exa hash. They want to maintain 6 exa hash roughly, right? So they don't have these ambitious growth plans like CleanSpark has, like Iron, like Cypher, like uh, others, uh, Riot, Mera, right? They just want to continue their path. They just want to generate the revenue that they generate and they're happy with it. But obviously investors are looking for growth. Uh, let's see. Do you think BitFarms is behind schedule to reach 20 exa hash by end of year? Any reason to worry? Uh, not yet. Right. We'll see if they can't get to 20 or sorry, to 10 X a hash by the end of this quarter. Right. By the end of the first half, then we may start to worry at it. But we'll have to see what they provide us with information. But right now, I think they still have plenty of time. Let's see. Uh, do you think miners peak late this year? As some believe um, might they might. I don't know. It's tough. It's a different cycle. Uh, they might peak earlier than they did last cycle, so they might peak between 9 to 12 months, like instead of the 12 to 18 months, right? Uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. Riot at end of the year. Xash. Oh, at the end of the year, also max price for Riot at the end of 2024. That all depends on how well they execute on their growth and also how efficient they are at the course kind of facility right that's going to determine a lot of things so right now we don't have any information on them no data once we get some data on it or at least once i get some data on it i can actually run some numbers to see where they possibly could be based on their growth through the end of the year i think they're hash by the end of the year they're targeting 20 some hash, i believe uh 24 i think correct me if i'm wrong there but i think it's like 2024 on it let's see Uh, top two most invested miners in your portfolio. Uh, that would be number one is CleanSpark, number two is Bitforms, number three is Iron. Uh, see here. So huh, I thought Bitforms paid off all debt. Your chart shows 4Q tripled to 69.15 million. So let's take a look at that. Let's see what we got here. Uh, not that one. Not that one. Where do we want it? Bit farms. Let's take a look at what we got here. So bit farms, Q4, 69.15 million. So what does that actually entail here? They are, well, that was from Q4, right? So they just paid off their debt here last month, I believe. Totally debt free. So if we look at, uh, where is it at? Assets, total assets, liabilities. Total trade, current portion of long-term debt was 4.2 million. The big thing here was warrant liabilities. They had 40 million in that. Um, so they have warrants, right? And that's about it. Lease liability was 12.9 million. That's really pretty much it of it. Uh, out of the 69, we had 40 million of the warrants. So they issued warrants, it looks like. Uh, that's the liability there. But other than that, they are debt free, it looks like uh, right now. Okay. Uh, let's go back here. Uh, 
Let's see, how likely is Mara going to get to all time high? Oops, sorry, I forgot to post it up here. I think that's definitely possible, right? With them growing, they only got to fix their operations. If they fix their operations to a more decent uptime, they'll be there without a problem, I think. Right? They're growing much more than they were in hash rate last time around. Their hash rate is going to be huge. Let's see. Uh, let's see, question. Do you have equal percentage position in CleanSpark, BitFarms, and Iron? Thanks for your work. No. Uh, right now, CleanSpark is like, gosh, like 80% of my position. <laughs> BitFarms is like 15 or 16, and Iron is like 4% of it or something like that. It's it's definitely highly weighted down towards CleanSpark, and that's because I've been buying CleanSpark since January of 2022, right? And I've been buying for basically two years, uh, all of 2022, 2023. I got in at really, really low prices and I was able to get a lot of shares for it. So that's the reason why it's obviously done really well here um, in the past six, seven months or so. Um, but it was definitely not a fun experience going through those bear markets or that bear market in 2022 and 2023, or 2022 more so than 2023 because they were going up. But even then in 2023, right, CleanSpark was building out like crazy. The stock wasn't doing much of anything. Other miners were doing well. Riot Marathon were you know, getting to new all-time highs and CleanSpark just kind of putting there along. And then finally, the day came when they say they're fully funded towards 16 exahash, and the stock took off, and it's been great ever since then. Let's see. Let me see. I'm trying to catch up to all the uh, questions here. Uh, well, let's take a look at what's going on with... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, it is tanking hard here. Let's take a look. Not that one. You guys don't want to see me. Uh, it's bouncing off the line here that I drew a while back. We'll see if it stays on that line, if that's kind of the resistance line there or support line potentially for going up. It went down to it and bounced off of it. We'll see. What was that? 66, 65,000? Interesting. Yeah. That might be our kind of bottom here, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. If not, we're going down potentially down to like 62,000, which is the 50-day moving average, it looks like, on Bitcoin, the purple line here. And if that doesn't hold, our previous support was at 61,000. But I think this might hold here. We'll see if this trend line continues to hold. Um, that'll be interesting to take a look at tomorrow if we bounce off of that. But yeah, definitely somebody's selling quite a bit there. All right, let's get back to the Q&A here. Uh, okay. Hi, Sebastian. With today's news on bid farms, are you still very high on bid farms going forward? Thank you. Yeah. Um, unless they start doing some crazy stuff or something like that, or they get a stupid CEO or something like that, then I might question my holdings in them. Uh, but right now their production and everything else is still really good. Uh, they did have a little bit down month because they had curtailment. They uh, explained it all. It should be all good there. Okay, let me see here. A couple more questions and we're going to call it a day, guys. Uh, let's see here. Uh, could BitFarms reach $10 cycle? Uh, yeah, I think even more than that. Uh, more than that, I would think. Let's see, crashing. You guys are talking about that. Okay. Uh, if Ben leaves, would you consider BitFarms? Uh, at that point, I might consider selling the shares. Yeah, I mean, Ben is obviously a huge integral part to that company there. He's got so much knowledge on the Bitcoin mining and everything else with immersion and things like that. Uh, if he was to leave, unless they got somebody like Taylor from CleanSpark or something like that to replace him with, I would possibly think of that, unless they got somebody really good in there as well to replace that. Okay, but that is it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to call it a day here. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. We'll obviously see what happens with Bitcoin here. It is still bouncing off of that, so we'll see what happens there. And then, as always, uh, let me go back over here. There we go. As always, the spreadsheets and everything else that i have for you guys are in the patreon group that's a uh, list link is in the description for that eight dollars a month and you might still be able to get five dollars or four dollars a month as well if there's open spots for those other than that that's only thing i sell to you guys uh it's my spreadsheets there okay so i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit the like button subscribe helps me out tremendously and we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, and then we'll do a regular recorded video tomorrow and then potentially a live one on wednesday as well okay so that's it i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much for coming in have a great night uh